Vertical tillage. What is it? Vertical tillage is a new concept to correct an old problem, compaction. Many of us have seen and experienced the effects of compaction layers and how they stunt the growth of a crop. These layers can severely affect root growth and ultimately yield. A penetrometer can quickly identify problem layers. At 200 PSI, roots are noticeably restricted, and if the needle reaches 250 PSI, roots are severely inhibited as well as the soil's ability to absorb water. Visually, this soil pit shows the density layers left behind by tillage equipment. The density of the soil the seed sprouts in determines the diameter of the roots. The looser soil in the field cultivator layer creates a larger root diameter, and when these roots reach the denser disc layer, they turn sideways. The main roots can no longer reach for nutrients and water, and smaller roots develop to attempt to go through this layer. Not only does this affect root growth, it also severely reduces the soil's ability to absorb moisture. Many say that no-till and time alone will correct a density problem. But take a look at what many times really happens. We took three split 30-gallon barrels and drove them in the ground five inches, 46 feet apart. The right one was in the same 10-year no-till that had been subsoiled with a Great Plains subsoiler and turbo-tilled 10 months earlier. The left barrel was also in the same 10-year no-till, but had been subsoiled with a Great Plains subsoiler and turbo-tilled 22 months earlier. Then we poured a 5-gallon bucket of water in each barrel to simulate a 3.5-inch rain. Using a stopwatch, we measured the amount of time it took for the soil to absorb the water. The no-till barrel had 2.5 inches of water at 1 hour, and over 3 quarters of an inch of water after 2 hours. That means that most of a 3.5 inch rain ran off reducing water absorption and increasing erosion. So how did the vertical tilled area do? Both the 1 and 2 year old subsoiled areas absorbed the entire 3.5 inches in less than 15 minutes. That means very little runoff, the moisture is now stored in the soil profile where the growing crop can utilize it, and erosion is all but eliminated. Only vertical tillage works the soil vertically never horizontally, so no horizontal density changes occur. The result is that the seed now sprouts and grows in a soil profile with uniform density. When you maximize the roots and the soil's ability to absorb water, you maximize the yield. The bottom line is that your tillage practice determines the amount of the soil profile that is usable by your crop. In essence, the size of flower pot your crop will be produced in. Which do you prefer, a small, shallow pot or an unrestricted big pot? A shallow pot, created by horizontal tillage from a field cultivator, produced these plants. You can see how the larger brace roots turned rather than continuing down. This plant was produced in a uniform density profile. As you can see, it has a healthy root system to enable the plant to achieve maximum yield. Take a look at these two wheat plants. They were planted in the same field as the water barrel test. They were in the same drill row, literally a few feet apart. The only difference is the one on the right was in 10-year no-till, and the one on the left was in the same 10-year no-till that was vertically tilled. The vertical till side is noticeably greener, and the root growth is nearly double. This graph shows the results of a five-year vertical tillage study done by Ken Ferry and Farm Journal. The results show an average yield increase of 12.7 bushel of corn per acre using vertical tillage rather than conventional horizontal tillage. What other single change can you make to your operation that will have a more positive impact on your bottom line? Great Plains has developed a full line of vertical tillage tools to meet specific needs. Refer to the vertical tillage tool videos to take a closer look at compaction issues and the tools needed to correct these problems.